Hey buddies, Jose Wire Ninjas. We build systems and circuits of integrity. We're also Dream Media's preferred install partner in the New Jersey area. That means two things. One, we make great videos for you guys. Number two, if you need system design, sales, audio video equipment, please hit up Dream Media. They'll take such good care of you, design you the perfect system, as well as give you the lowest best price possible. Also, if you need install, they're gonna refer you to us within this area, New Jersey, the surrounding area as well. And we'll make sure to take good care of you just as Dream Media would with that five-star service. Today, I'm gonna give you the ins and outs of pre-wiring for data. Um, I'm gonna show you what we use, how we do it, and give you some little tips and tricks, what to use, what not to use, what to avoid, and uh, just give you general guidelines for pre-wiring data in a home today in you know, 2021, what the current standards are. So let's go take a look. All right, guys, so we're inside the home. We're here in Easton, Connecticut, and let's check out some data lines. I don't know if we have any on this uh, floor, so let's go upstairs. <laughs> Hopefully I don't trip and eat face while holding the camera. <laughs> All right. I know you guys would love to see that. <laughs> um, all right, buddies. So what are we talking about today? We're talking data. What does that mean, data, Cat 6A? Couple of things I wanna cover here. Number one, as always, if you're pre-wiring for anything, what I like to do is start with the origin and destination of the circuits. Now this could start with a plan on paper. I usually keep it simple, straightforward, clear and concise with my clients, the builders, the homeowners, whatever it is. Pen and paper works just fine today. Um, of course, digital documents are nice, but the point is get a plan, get, it, get, get your ideas organized and figure out what you want. Now. What I like to do is establish what I call an AV data drop. Um, there's different types of drops when it comes to data. So one I would call a Wi-Fi AP or WAP drop, which is for a Wi-Fi access point. Usually one line, that's all you need for a Wi-Fi access point. Um, and then you have AVDs or AV data drops. And these I consider locations that are gonna be media walls, TV locations, anything media, audio video, or TV related. I would, call, I would fall that into the AVD or AV data drop, audio video data drop, I call it. Um, the reason I separate these things, uh, well, there's a few reasons. So let's go over the last kind of drop, which would be an office or a workstation drop. Now, they all have different uh, parameters they need to meet. For example, Wi-Fi access point, all you need is one line, power and access point. A lot of access points have a secondary out, so you can tap and you know, run a line from there elsewhere if you need to. Um, an AV or audio video data drop has different parameters involved. And what I mean is, so when you have a TV location or media location, you need one cat for ethernet, for internet services, data, which you can switch off, put a little mini switch and you know, tap in four or five devices, whatever you want. But one should be dedicated for internet traffic. Now you should have another cat cable dedicated for an HDMI extender or an audio video bail-in. Um, what these things do is they will uh, convert CAT cable into audio, video, data, or IR data as well, you know, for remote features or functionality. So you could take one CAT cable, get an audio return out of it, you can convert it to HDMI, and you can also do, you know, remote controls, IR signals, or IR data communication between here and the rack. Um, and then you should have, I would say, another drop as a backup and then you could even get into another one or two drops solely for audio distribution or audio return channel aside. You know, you could do one separate video, one separate audio uh, for each of these cat lines. But at minimum for an AV data drop, I would do one cat for internet traffic, one cat for uh, HDMI or audio video IR extension, you know, one of these boxes, these extenders, and then one as a backup. Maybe you just need an audio back or maybe you need a digital audio the other way, whatever it is. I would do three drops minimum for an audio video data drop. Now, a workstation drop, these vary a little bit because workstations do vary a lot. Most people, they only need one, maybe two drops, one for a computer, one for a printer, if they want dedicated lines. Home runs are always better, in my opinion, but it really adds up once you, you know, you, you got 48 port switches going. <laughs> Those things aren't cheap, you know, and depending on your needs, you may or may not want this, this budget to go crazy on you. But workstations do vary. Uh, it depends on the home, the homeowner, the inhabitants, and the use of the workstation. Some people who are engineers, who are running internet-based companies or servers, 
they might need six lines per port and multiple ports in one office, you know, for multiple workstations. So when it comes to the office or the workstation drop, you should inquire and figure out what is best, how many lines, what their needs are. But these are the three main drops that I deploy or I, you know, talk about with my clients uh, when I'm pr planning a pre-wire or we're discussing what should and shouldn't be done. So um, I will say though, for an AV data drop, um, you could go minimally, let's say two lines, one for internet traffic and one for, um, how do you say, you know, uh, backup. If there really isn't much need, you know, if the homeowners don't have a lab, they don't want an audio system or an external audio system, basically they just want a TV on the wall, I would do at minimum two for an AV data drop. But for media wall locations where there's, you know, audio video involved, where you're maybe thinking about doing a theater 5.1 or even a, a sound bar and, a, you know, a virtual theater or, you know, wireless surrounds, whatever it is, if it's anything more than just the TV, I would go three minimum. But if it's just a TV, two is the very bare minimum. One for internet traffic, one is a backup. You can use it for a bail-in, you know, HDMI extender. But another thing I want to talk about is cabling in today's world. Cabling in today's world, I highly recommend you use CAT6A. This should be what you're using. This should be what you're using because why? Right now we're getting a gig at a reasonable cost from internet service providers in most parts of the country. You know, I do have clients where they have no internet service. It's horrible. They're still running DSL, which is crazy, but it's very remote areas. However, if you're planning to buy a home, if you're planning to pre-wire a home, spend a bunch of money to get this thing wired up correctly, please make sure you're using CAT6A. Why? It's good for 10 gigs. And at the current time, 10 gig service is about $8,000 a month where I live. But that doesn't mean in 10 years from now, it could be $300 a month. And also, if you take a look at the trend of internet traffic, you know, mobile and otherwise, all we do is draw more and more and more data over the years. So eventually 10 gig will be absolutely necessary. And if you're pre-wiring a home today, I highly suggest you you spend a couple extra dollars and, and do it right, you know, at least wire for 10 gig. If you want to get into fiber, that's cool. That I feel like is a long ways away. Fiber is great. It has its really good uses and needs and you may have a need for fiber. For example, when I, when I build my house, what I want to do is I want to run fiber everywhere so I can have, you know, I can have a dedicated gaming server, have five gaming workstations and have basically a monitor, keyboard and mouse in each room. That's it. And the fiber is going to help me do that because you need zero latency on the peripherals there. But um, things to consider. Cat5 come kind of out of the question. Unless you're wiring for voice, I wouldn't even get into Cat5 or even consider it. Cat6 should be your bare minimum, but I highly recommend Cat6A. Uh, when it comes to cable, I like to use the best I can source. I don't like to get into, you know, listing product and what to use. I happen to use vertical cable. Uh, the reason I do is because it's handmade here in the USA, and personally, I actually really appreciate that. A lot of the stuff I buy personally and for business, I try to source here from this country. Uh, I don't know. I was born and raised here, so I kind of love this place, to be honest. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's just me. I have a little special thing, or I don't know. I really care. But um, vertical cable carries a 15-year warranty. It also, uh, the Keystone Jacks and the, the Terminations, they carry a lifetime warranty. And for me, that alone should push you towards vertical. However, there's plenty of good cable. There's a lot of good manufacturers, even some here in the USA. I just like to shoot for the best quality. That way my install can last forever. And I will say cat cable in general is very robust. It does seem to last forever, um, as long as Romex cabling in a home, maybe even longer. But um, uh, a lot of people use Monoprice. You can go to Monoprice, that's cool, but I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's hard for me to make recommendations. I don't want to step on any toes. I'm just telling you what I use. For me, it usually falls within logistics, whether it's vertical cable. I like to order that ahead of time, get it there. Um, if, I have, if I'm in a crunch, I'll go local distributor. Um, if the client or the homeowner or the builder wants to cut costs, I'll go monoprice. It kind of comes down to the particular situation. So I guess the best recommendation I can give you is do what's best for you, your home, your budget, your family, whatever it is. Do what's best for you, but at least do some research and try to use some CAT6A. Now let's talk about coaxial. Uh, I've been doing a lot of pre-wires and this past year I've used almost no coax. The only time I use coax is 
bridging between racks just in case we need an ISP feed, but a lot of homeowners will have me nix the coax altogether. They don't want it. I tell them we should at least do one per room. Uh, they don't care. They don't want it. It seems like people are cutting the cable company out. But also, everything's going IP-based. Everything's going to be on that IP chain and, and tappable, usable. Eventually, everything will be totally IP-based. And even beyond that, cloud-based. But the future I see is, you know, they give you a box, you put it into your, you tap it into your switch, and then you got, you got cable distribution, you know, at each Ethernet port. Uh, that's probably what's going to happen. If not, they'll just jump straight to the cloud cable services. So coax, I would consider it. I would still use it. It definitely adds value. If you ever sell the home, you, you know, you're wired for coax. But as far as data is concerned, make sure you hit at least two per room minimum, one for Wi-Fi access point, minimum three for uh, AV, you know, media walls. And that's about it. It's really about I think the most important thing is to, to take the time to plan, prepare, think about what you want, think about what your current needs are, your future needs are, plan and execute. That's about it. But don't skip the planning phase. It is the most important. Do your research. All right, buddies. So we covered data. I showed you what I use, what I do, and what I consider for a data pre-wire. Um, I gave you my parameters for minimum, you know, data lines per room or per drop, depending on the needs of the particular room. Every room's different. Some rooms, like the dining room, you're just going to rely on Wi-Fi. You don't need a data port on the wall. Nobody's going to be sitting there with a computer. Or maybe you will. Maybe you like to chill in the dining room. We don't know. But when it comes to data, I would consider the three drops that I laid out for you. Um, if you want to throw cameras into data too, I would consider cameras as part of the data system. I use all IP-based cameras at this point in time, so um, if you're going to consider cameras, I would throw them in with the data as well. Consider the cameras, you know, each one a data drop, and all you need is one line per camera. Um, cameras, access points, uh, hardwired data ports, media walls, AV data drops, that's about it. I hope you appreciate the knowledge I'm dropping on you guys, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Oh my gosh! Is that the Dream Media van in my neighborhood? What? Wait, Dream Media, come back. We need you.